what's up guys typical hunter here have had i've had several people ask me how do you cape a deer uh, you've probably seen lots of videos on this but this is my 2019 muzzleloader buck but i'm caping him out right now and the first thing you do is you start with a y cut back here behind the antlers in the back, uh, back of the skull uh, and you just make a make a cut a y up to the base of the burrs here and then i've i've gone i've done a little bit so far as you can tell kind of past this left ear over here and i'm making my way around you gotta be real careful in here to make sure you're getting all the way up getting all that hide and skin up up all the way to the burr you want to have enough to make sure that the taxidermist has enough that when it's tan and he's putting them back together and then you just, you can see on this Y, you just kind of keep going around burrs. Um, that you wanna, you wanna stay as close to that burr as you can and you just keep going, coming up the skull. This is the most tedious part. Um, probably where you need to spend most of your time. I don't turn the ears out. I just, I just never have. I'll leave that for the taxidermist. Um, but you know, I don't know how hard it is, and I, I just don't want to mess it up. So I'll leave that for them to do. They don't charge me anymore. But, okay, I'm going to keep work. Make uh, Got tongue tied there. I'm going to keep working my way around this deer, and I'll show you in some of the other more, more important parts as I go get a little further along. All right, so we're going to continue on here. I got my buddy Jace here to video hey. for a little bit. All right, bud, you come down here and look. So I'm just making my way around the burrs here. You know, you can use a, uh, you can use a screwdriver here to just kind of wedge up and pry this hide off around the burrs. Um, Jace, can you see where I'm working right here? Yeah. I just put my thumb on that knife. Did you see that? Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> uh, what a typical dude, huh? Typical hunter. Yeah. So you gotta, you gotta be, just make sure and just take your time right here. Sometimes you gotta readjust the head. Turn it around too much, okay, bud. Sometimes you gotta readjust the head and not like the way you adjust it and readjust it more and just just really make sure you're because it's real easy to cut notches in this hide right here i mean it's super easy to to split the split the hide you want to make sure you got that clean line give that taxidermist something really good to tuck up in here and Almost got this burr to hide off this antler base here. Just come down here where you can see what I'm working. Okay. Just kind of, there we go. See, I got that hide off that whole antler base there now, so we can really do some work. Um, you got all that in the front of me, bud. Mm -hmm. Man, look at the eye socket on this deer. It's huge. Uh -huh. So this part here, I, I really want, um, can you see this good, bud? Yeah. Okay, so here's where we're getting into the area where a lot of people make mistakes and it's in this tear duct that's just in front of the eyeball. So show here, Jace. So you guys see this tear duct here? And so what a, a lot of guys or a lot of people do is once they get through this eye, they just kind of cut straight through that, okay? And they leave all this hide. Well, a taxidermist needs that to tuck in. You know, otherwise, it's not gonna look natural, or it's really gonna look bad. Um, and so you gotta really be careful when you're getting around these eyes here and you get to this front corner that you're paying attention and you get really get your knife down in there and it all just peels right out of that tear duct. And I'll show you, just follow along here as we work our way down. Really kind of, there's this membrane around these eyes that you gotta get into and you wanna make sure that you don't cut these eyelashes off. Uh, taxidermist isn't going to use this they'll flesh all that out but you got to be careful that you don't cut these these tear ducts out here are these I'm sorry these eyelashes here uh, this is this is the main detail you know on your mount is around the eyes and uh, that's really what gives its lifelike look. appearance yeah and look as you can see here now look okay, Jace, can you see here in this video yep. show them here so I'm getting to the front of this eyeball, okay? And that's this where that tear duct 
dives down in right here. A lot of guys just kind of cut, look, they just cut right through this right here. It, it feels like that that's okay, but that's where they make a big mistake and it really causes problems for the taxidermist. So just keep working your way around here, taking your time, and you wanna really get down in here, okay? Let me get this okay bud and we'll call this one good. Um, Watch your bum. Yeah, yeah, be real careful. Nice, huh, dude? All right, see how I'm just taking, I'm taking my time, guys. Just, just small little cuts here. Getting a little meat with the hide, and it's okay. Taxidermist is gonna flesh, uh, flesh that out. I'm getting in here now, okay? There's a little cartilage type ridge thing here that's all part of the tear duct. You wanna stay behind that and against the skull. You see how that, can you see that, Jason, in the video? Tip mm -hmm. of my knife there. Guys, you wanna stay behind that. Don't cut through that. You cut through that, you're gonna have a hole there, and it's and it's really not gonna look good when they uh, go to put this thing together. Um, it's yeah, I'm just cutting through all this. I'm really trying to stay close to that bone, buddy. Okay. But I'm almost through it here. Almost through it. Forehead, son, here, bud. Get that eye. I really probably need to get around that burr, but I want to end this little short video here so that people can see. You can you can see that tear duct there. Zoom in on this, Jace. See this tear duct? I'm through it. I've got it off, okay? So this is where we're just going to just peel the rest of this out, coming through that in there. Look at there. There's the tear duct. There's the tear duct. And that's what you want to make sure you don't cut through. You can feel it. This is a lot of cartilage in here. Um, so, okay, we're gonna pause it a little bit. I'm gonna get a little further ahead, get around the uh, the mouth and stuff, show you guys where we go from there. Yeah. All right, guys, I've made my way. I've got both burrs and uh, the bases of each antler completely, completely off, but I wanted to, uh, I wanted to, share the story of this big monster buck and a um, little bit of me and the challenges I've had this year with uh, filming hunts by myself. You know, we didn't get to have Neil make it out on the elk hunt, filmed it on our phones, got some good stuff that we're gonna be bringing to you. So I've been trying to self film all of my deer hunts this year on my phone. And I killed a 143 inch deer with my recurve earlier this year, was videoing it, did not realize that the camera mount that I was using or the phone mount slipped on me and you see me draw and shoot but you don't see the impact or anything like that but so I'll, I'll have that hunt coming for you um, I did not get this hunt on film I was uh, I was out muzzleloader hunting in a blind where I didn't have a way to mount my phone I tried to get some pre-roll of him walking out and I'll tell you I'll tell you a story so Sunday evening, last day of muzzleloader season. Um, I'd actually been hunting all week with my recurve and I hadn't taken the muzzleloader out yet. So something told me Sunday that, well, why don't you take your muzzleloader? So I did, I hunted Sunday morning muzzleloader, didn't see much. And uh, all the guys on the lease went home. I usually like to go home. I got an hour and a half drive back to my house, but I decided I want to stay and hunt. And you can obviously tell it paid off in a big way. Um, went over to a blind that, that I like to hunt on a green field that's got a feeder and uh, it was hot it got hot it'd been really cold we actually had 20 degree mornings which is kind of unusual for us this time of year it's an awesome week but it got warm Sunday and uh, I had to actually fight the wasps in the blind um, several I had to kill several wasps because it was so hot I didn't even have a jacket on so as I'm sitting there hunting that evening, um, about four o'clock, I have a doe and a spotted fawn come out on the field. They feed, feed on the wheat for a while and then go over to the feeder and nibble on it. And then they make their way on and I'm not seeing anything, uh, no other activity. And um, as the day progresses, you know, I'm on my phone talking with some friends and things. Uh, I 
you know, I just, I gotta stay ready. And in that, in that stand, we're hunting on a big high line right away. And it's happened to me a ton before where these bucks will come out across this right away. And before you know it, they're in the timber on you and you don't, you know, you didn't have time to get a shot. So I actually had my gun sitting on my leg and the barrel of it facing out the window that direction. Well, about five o'clock, um, I actually get a text from my dad. My dad's hunting Kansas. And his text said that he had just rattled in a big 10 pointer and missed him with his bow. Oh, well, you know how you can read the message on your phone without opening? I saw the message and for whatever reason, I just didn't open it, you know? And uh, I look up and I see this deer. I see a deer out there, 140 yards walking. And I thought, oh, there's the deer. And, and just instantly, you know, and then I'm like, well, it's a buck. And so my first instinct is to grab my phone, pull it up. I pulled up vertical too, by the way, it wasn't horizontal. Pull it up, I'm actually in Snapchat where you can slide your thumb and zoom. Pull it up and I start zooming in on this deer. And as I'm zooming and I'm looking at him, it hits me. Jeez, <laughs> that's a big old buck. <laughs> and while I'd love to get some good footage on film for you guys, uh, I've never in my life had, you know, killed a deer like this. I went into hunter mode. And so, I put the phone down, I get a two second video of this deer walking, okay? Get my gun up and he's still walking and I'm tracking him and then he stops on his own and, and when he does, he actually stops and takes a step towards me and up that right away and he's just got his head up looking and in, in my scope, I just know he's tall, I know he's got a huge body, his neck looked like it was that big around, mature deer, no doubt. So I just started easing on that trigger boom you know completely let the gun surprise me all that stuff steady rest rock steady i knew my I knew my crosshairs were on the mark boom well when the gun went off i wasn't paying attention i was just you know my my bill of my hat was on the scope and boom man that scope gun kick about knocked me out scope hit my hat knocked my hat off well it was windy that day too and and uh so the smoke cleared pretty quick and I watched this deer go back into the timber the way he came out. Man, my instant reaction was, no, you gotta be kidding me. Because he was quartering to me and I actually had my crosshairs right here on the front of his front of his shoulder here. And I thought, man, it's gonna stone cold. You know, it's gonna just drop him. But it didn't. Um, so first, first thought was doubt. It's like, oh man, I just missed this deer. And I really didn't know what he was. I just knew he was a big buck. And uh, so my buddy that was out there hunting with me, Greg, he was bow hunting the spot. He calls me. Actually, I called him. He had texted me. He said, well, so I call him. I let, you know, tell him the story, what I just told you, and I wasn't sure. Well, another typical hunter move. My, I'd noticed the night before, look here, Jace, I nicked this hide. It's frozen, and I kind of got in a hurry and nicked it. Jeez. Um, good thing it's on the side. Maybe they can sew that up. Dad, damn it. Um, but I, I, the, the night before walking out, I, I noticed my light was getting dim. It's really, the batteries are getting low in it. Been using it since elk, my elk hunt. And so I call Greg, I'm like, dude, you got, a, you got a good light on you because mine's about dead and we're losing light, you know? And he goes, yeah, I do. He goes, man, I got two deer right in front of me. I, you know, why don't you go look and see if you can find blood and then I'll get down. So good idea. I dropped my stuff out of the, the, uh, I drop all my stuff out of the blind I was hunting, climb down, head out across the field. Well, while I'm walking across, I remembered that I'd taken that video. So I pull the video up and you can actually zoom in on the video and I pause it and I'm just like, oh my, that's when it hit me what this thing was. And that's when like panic kind of set in, you know, like, oh my gosh, please tell me I hit that deer. Please tell me. Oh my gosh, I hope I didn't miss that deer, you know, because I've done it. And anyway, so I get up there to where I think he's standing out in the grass, and I look around for a little bit. I don't see blood, and so, which is no big deal. It's kind of hard to find the grass, and, and I thought, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into the timber and find it in the leaves, and I see a trail where I thought he went in. So I head in that trail, you know, I'm going slow looking. I get about 10 yards, and there's no blood. So, you know, a little bit of that panic is still sitting in and so i'm like well okay i i make a 90 degree turn right where i'm parallel in this this high line cut so i want to cut i want to see if i can cut his trail where he ran in 
and I go about 15 yards and there's a big, tall, long, fat, green blade of grass that had blood smeared on it. And I, I said, yes, you know. And uh, right then I stopped and I called Greg, like, dude, I got blood, man, I'm gonna need you to, I need you to come over here. And he's like, all right, well, you gonna just wait there on me or what? And uh, as I'm on the phone with him, I look up ahead and I just see blood, just, just a beautiful blood trail. And I was like, dude, I got good blood. I'm gonna keep easing up. I think I think I hit this deer good and uh, you know I keep going up and I start seeing in the leaves where this deer had fallen he fell three or four times just digging up dirt everywhere we actually went in the timber and he made a half moon he only went in about 20 yards and he cut to the right and he started actually heading back towards the right of way I wish he had made it back on out in because I would have seen that but uh, man, he didn't make it far. I see him over there. He actually flipped upside down. I don't know if he flipped backwards or if he was running and flipped over, but his antlers were stuck in the dirt. I had to pull him out. Uh, deer of my life, I'm telling you, this is, this is absolutely the biggest deer I've ever had a chance at. Uh, I've ever squeezed the trigger on and killed, obviously. But you can see, look at this, Jace. He's, his bases are just, he's, heavy lots of character lots of awesome cool kickers and split brow time you know split brow and another kicker here split g3 uh he almost sprouted off a couple kickers here um haven't got down to his teeth yet this thing was an absolute brute he, his body well over 200 pound deer field dressed for southern oklahoma is a is a giant an absolute giant extremely fortunate to put my tag on him so anyways i wanted to share the story of that hunt put that in this video maybe uh, give you a little something more interesting to hear as you're watching this but this one side over here still kind of frozen it's, it's kind of getting tough but i'm able to i'm just taking my time making my way down through uh, but we're gonna pause it here when we get down on down into the 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 nose area here and around the mouth we'll we'll jump back in and shoot that video um and then i'll show you with the skull what i do all right mm -hmm. all right guys look we're going up the face here now we've got it we got it all the way off the neck all the way around the the base's antlers the eyes are all peeled down now uh ears are cut off still got the cartilage in them remember i said i don't turn those out uh i've never done it i may attempt one but probably won't but here we are okay now we're getting into the mouth. Um, so I, you know, a lot of these taxidermists, are, they're, they, they do a lot, a lot of different cool things to do, but there's, this mouth goes way back in there, okay? See, it actually starts right here. Look at this, okay? So you wanna make sure that you don't just keep cutting through here and cut all this stuff. You wanna stay right on the bone and cut all this stuff out. Whether the taxidermist, you, look at this, look at this inner lip here, okay? And along the gum line, it all starts way back here, look. Look, there's this lip. This is starting way back here, okay? So you wanna make sure you get all this right next to the, along the teeth line here. You see that? See what I'm doing? Okay. Um. Now, I'm not a taxidermist. I've never put a deer together, but I know they need everything you can get. But let them cut off what, what they don't need, okay? See, I'm putting all this cheap stuff out from the inside of the lip and right along the jaw right here, okay? I'm keep coming down. Keep on coming down. Now I've seen I've seen some taxidermists that they'll actually start on the mouth. They'll actually peel all this back from the from this way up and peel up to here, and then they'll come back here and do their Y cut and make their way down. I always start in the back. Just, I don't know preference thing. It's the way I like to do it. I've never tried the other way. It may be easier, but so you can do you know find what you like best and go at it. But I'm just gonna keep coming down the bottom here. jaw bottom teeth you can see this gum you got all this gum stuff yeah. taxidermists like really like that okay just making her way taking her time don't want to cut any holes in it this right here would be really hard to sew up. This is very, 
I mean, it's obviously a very noticeable spot in the mount, so it'd be really hard for that taxidermist to sew this up. If you make a mistake, make it back here. Um, Got to have neighbors. Yeah, I'm pretty sure our neighbors hate us. I'm pretty sure they hate me. Typical hunter over here living next door. They, they're, they're probably in their minds. Typical redneck. <laughs> huh, Jace? Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, oh, look at that. That's so gross. Sorry, guys. They get in the mail. They can hear every single word. They can hear me? No. Oh, what was that? Just cutting it, bud. The knife mm -hmm. hit bone in here. I remember that turkey that I killed and those two boys came in. Yeah. And they saw it, it was like, whoa. Yeah. They come by and saw me cutting the breast out of it. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, Jace, you shot that? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I knew one of the guys, but I didn't know the other one. Oh yeah. Dude, you're a turkey killing machine, aren't you, bud? <laughs> We're gonna get some good, good video of you and Braden killing some turkeys this year. Yeah. My knife's getting a little dull. So. What are those spikes, man? Hmm? What are those spikes? That's inside of their gum. I don't know. They have just weird, these little, I don't know what you'd call them, on the inside of cheeks. <laughs> weird, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah, but you want to get all that as much of that as you can. Make the taxidermist cut off what you don't want. Now it's getting dull, uh, which is okay, you know. I actually think when you're doing this, some people are probably going to laugh at this, but I actually think an ultra, uh, all, one of those ultra sharp knives, one of these when they're brand new, is really not good because it's really easy to nick this hide with that. Um, Skin coyote pelts and things like that, and bobcats. It's really easy to knock holes in that fur with a crazy sharp knife, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I know that sounds, probably sounds counterproductive, but anyways. Those sounds you hear, that screaming thing, that was the donkey. Yeah. My that was the donkey. My yeah. neighbors have a loud donkey, don't they, love? Yeah. I can hear it when, I, when I'm coming to get the mail. I just hear <laughs> When you're coming home off the school bus? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Can't wait to get this jawbone out of him to see how old this deer is. Yeah. I think this deer's really. Yeah. Good. That's exactly <laughs> what that is. All right, look, you can see I got this bottom jaw peeled off, okay? Yeah. There it is. Now I just got to get around this nose. And we'll have this thing caped out. And uh, and what I'll do is I'll just put him in the freezer and get him to my taxidermist. And they'll finish out the fleshy part of it. He will. And uh, send it off to the tannery to be tanned. And a year later, be put together on a form and hanging in my house. What a beautiful deer, huh, buddy? Monster. Monster buck. <laughs> Big monster Oklahoma whitetail buck. I never heard of a 15 pointer in my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, there can, small deer can have a lot of points, Jace, you know? Yeah. This deer's got big frame and a lot of mass and long. You know, he's, that's what makes him big. Plus, he got 15 points. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. All right, I'm going to get up in this nose. I like to get as much, I leave as much cartilage. I'll let, I'll let the taxidermist do all that tedious stuff because I don't want to make a mistake. They like to tuck all this stuff in and get more lifelike detail on these mounts and stuff. And I want to make sure he's got That's it all he can use. Oh, some blood on your thumb. Do I? Yeah. Yeah. Part of the game. Yep. 
<laughs> looks so weird with that without his skin. <laughs> here we go. Here's the last cut, Jace. You ready? Yep. There it is. There it is. And here he's got a caked out deer. Yep. That's what will go to the taxidermist to be fleshed out and sent off to the tannery. And then we'll be put on to the form. There he is. But from here, from this point, you know, we could cut this neck meat off here and cut the skull off and then boil it and have the euro mount, but that's not what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna cut this skull plate out. You cut, you know, I like to leave, once again, leave leave more than what the taxidermist is gonna use, meaning on the skull plates that they screw into the, into the form. So I cut kind of bigger down in here in the center of the eyeball here. And then I come back here behind the skull and I cut a straight line down right through here to the center of the eyeball and then to here, okay? And then he can trim all that down and make it smaller. If you cut it too small, then he's gotta add cement and all this other stuff. So um, leave more for them, more is better. All right, <clears throat> well that's, that's caping a deer by a typical hunter. Hope you, hopefully you learned something. Uh, realize it's something you can do yourself. I don't know, some taxidermists charge to do it. I don't know, mine don't, but, uh, and it's, you know, it's kind of cool to do your own stuff. My buddy. Yep. Uh, hey, if you found some use out of this, you thought it was educational, interesting, you liked my story about killing this big deer, hit that like button down below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting on? I'm going to get better, going to get better cameras, better setup. We'll get some good hunts on video for you. I'm telling you, yeah. we got more elk hunts coming. We got tons of awesome turkey hunt coming. Uh, Braden still got his bow and his gun in his hand for this year. We got some more whitetail action coming. So stick with us. Hit that subscribe button. Below. Okay. Goodbye. Boys. Oh my gosh, look at this sucker, holy moly.